Last night I could not sleep, so of course I watched a movie. And the movie I watched was Alan Rudolph's Welcome to L.A., which was released in 1976. I think it's a completely misunderstood film, and I think it may be a deeply underrated gem, although it is very hard to find. Now, the reason I tracked down this movie in particular is because I've been reading a lot about Robert Altman. I finished a wonderful oral history by Mitchell Zuckoff, which I highly recommend. And Alan Rudolph was a protege of Altman. He co-wrote and assistant directed. And then finally, Robert Altman said, hey, I'll produce your little movie. Welcome to L.A. So he has a lot of Altman regulars. In fact, he takes two characters from Nashville, Keith Carradine playing the philandering musician and Geraldine Chaplin playing the journalist. And he kind of does riffs on those characters with the same actors. Keith Carradine is a philandering songwriter, not a guy who's actually recording, but he ha actually is a little bit more palatable in this because the movie is about something bigger, and I'm about to get into that. Geraldine Chaplin uh, is a photographer instead of a journalist, but she is different because she is locked in an unhappy marriage to a uh, blonde-dyed Harvey Keitel. Now, that alone, that alone should should be a, a draw to see the fucking movie, right? But this movie has a vibe about how so many people wander this earth in 1976 Los Angeles, or for that matter, 2024 New York, or 2024 elsewhere, and they're lonely, and they're in need of love, and they don't know how to communicate what they need. And even though they are married or single or they have lovers, they still don't know how to communicate that. That's still a fucking problem. You know, instead of calling somebody up at two in the morning, you now text someone at two in the morning, sometimes out of loneliness, sometimes because you haven't found the right person who you can communicate your needs to, or you do have the right person, but it's your own fucking fault. So I appreciated that particular vibe. It does have a vast ensemble cast, and Sally Kellerman, one of Altman's regulars, is excellent in this movie. Alan Rudolph directs her and Chaplin. He's he's good with a woman as well as Altman, and gets an amazing, quiet, subtle performance that you really fucking feel her loneliness. I I was watching this movie going, I mean, you know, usually you see Sally Kellerman in her bigger roles like Hot Lips or Back to School, and she's very larger than life. Not in this movie. Not in this movie. She's more nuanced. And that shows that Rudolph actually is as good with actors in his own way as Altman. But the other thing about this movie is the, aside from the vibe, which I really liked, is the visual look of this movie. Now, there are a couple of points where Rudolph steals the Altman Zoom, and I'm like, hey, man, you don't have to mimic Bob. Just be your own fucking voice. And he, is, he, he does get to there. He does get there. There are many scenes where you see mirrors and Carradine looking into a rearview mirror. Like, there are constant reflective surfaces, and there's nowhere for these the feelings of these characters to go. There's one fucking scene where one character's in a bathtub, and you literally see fucking four mirrors there as she's expressing her sentiments of what she needs i you know really very subtle but work but it works and there's also this fucking weird ass music because keith carradine is the son of a yogurt industrialist he's the guy who wrote the songs and then there's this ridiculous bombastic meatloaf ish corporate rock guy with bombastic strings and over-the-top pretentiousness like singing these songs and this is throughout the entire soundtrack and for some viewers this might be um this might be distracting especially since the songs repeat especially one song about los angeles being a a night of one night stands or a place of one night stands but i kind of 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 got into it i really got into the vibe of this fucking movie and this movie was completely shit on when it was released, I think because the critics at the time had it in for Altman, and anything that Altman did, either as a director or in this case a producer, uh, was just open season. And that's really not fair to this movie, because what it does from a vibe standpoint is tell us something vital to say about how we can't communicate our inner needs. 
and I was moved by the movie in a weird fucking way. It's a strange fucking movie, but I was locked into the vibe, man. So I'm here to stick up for Alan Rudolph's Welcome to L.A. I think it deserves a lot more appreciation. I think Alan Rudolph, who has given us Choose Me and uh, Afterglow, is a pretty solid filmmaker who deserves a little bit more respect. But this early work in particular is fucking fascinating. I mean, here I am. I've gone on for more than five minutes. That should tell you everything you need to know.